Hello, everyone. I'm going to play an interview with Christopher Lee from 1975. Have a listen. Do you regard black magic as being purely fictitious, or is there some truth in it? Some truth? 100% truth. There is nothing fictitious about black magic in any way whatever. It is a fact. It is a fact uh, which has existed for several thousand years. I mean, when we talk about black magic, we are talking about Satanism, necromancy, alchemy, witchcraft, the worship of uh, Satan, um, the worship of dark forces, whether it's voodoo, juju, whether it's something practiced in the Western world or the Eastern world, uh, whether it's uh, easily defined or not easily defined, the order of the left-hand path, the, the following of this, the following of that. It is basically the worship of the force of evil as embodied by Satan, Lucifer, the princes of darkness and their legions and so on. In a very simple sense, of course, it goes much more deeply than that. It is a fact. It is a desperately dangerous fact. It does exist. It exists around us today. Satanic ceremonies will be happening in Britain tonight. Very definitely. Ask any priest, ask any member of the forces of law and order, and they will tell you that Satanism as such, it's there, and it has been for thousands of years. Man has worshipped the devil longer than he has worshipped, um, perhaps, an established religious figure. Do you think you're in any danger in mimicking it in front of the camera? No, that's an interesting question. All right. Well, that is probably the most honest interview I've ever seen with a celebrity. <laughs> Honestly. So Christopher Lee, I think, stated it quite eloquently. It doesn't matter if you're worshipping voodoo or juju or take the left-hand path with Crowley. You can worship an angel. You can be a witch. You can do any form, Cronunos or the Baphomet or whatever way you'd like. But at the core of it, it is the worship of the Prince of Darkness, the evil, dark forces. So I think he articulated that quite well. We're going to take a look at the Wicker Man. All right, here is Christopher Lee in the 1973 horror movie, The Wicker Man. You see him standing in front of the effigy of a human. And there's a man inside of this, a virgin man dressed in white. He's a police officer. I don't know if many people are familiar with this uh, cult classic. Christopher Lee is the leader of this island, and the Wicker Man is linked with vegetation and regeneration. It's linked with the harvest. This is happening in and around May Day. This movie features the Maypole. There are a lot of ancient uh, practices and fertility rites that are linked with this. So let's just take a look at a few of the pictures. But indeed, the Celtic Druid practice, as accounted by historians, is that they sacrificed human beings. Here we have the actual burning man. And here in California, not too far from where I live, every year there is a burning man festival just up the way. It's a music festival where people do drugs and uh, they burn uh, this effigy of a man. Now, I don't believe there's a man inside of it when they do it, but they are pantomiming this ritual. And I don't know if those people are aware, but it is the music industry. They have bands from all over the place and the wicker man happens. Perhaps the sacrifices are happening on the ground because people do pass away from doing drugs and all manner of um, heavy drinking and so on. There's often 
people are hospitalized and die. So there we have it. Okay, we have on the front here the rabbit, which is fertility. I don't want to get too much into the Wiccan calendar, but I can assure you that the holidays that Christians celebrate, and I made a video on this three or four years ago, but there's no reason for the bunny to be around at Easter. Okay, that is a fertility animal for the springtime. The rabbit is known to be the most prolific breeder, right? We know there's that term doing it like bunnies and it's because, and I don't mean to be vulgar, but it's because they um, create large numbers of offspring. Okay, so, and the, the eggs and all of that are from pagan practices. Okay, I'll get into it on another. They show sunrise behind this um, wicker man. Now, I, I, I must tell you that this movie had quite an impact on me. I was a bit of a film buff, as I've alluded to before, and this is a visually stunning movie. And so, although the theme was very, very dark, it's hard to watch, to be honest with you. A very hard movie for me to watch. I abhor torture and um, harm to the innocent. I, I, I abhor it. So, but I think that this movie is some truth in plain sight. I showed yesterday that Queen Elizabeth was signed, was uh, initiated in a Druid ceremony. Now the Druids were known for doing this, known for sac human sacrifice. Okay, so I think that Christopher Lee knew quite a bit. Now we have people here in this bit of menagerie, right? People dressed up in various forms of woodland creatures. And here we have, it looks like a clarinet, but it reminds me of Pan playing the flute as he leads children away. I think that there are these sort of myths that we have seen over and over again in cinema. I think that the elite like to show us in plain sight what their beliefs are. I think it's a way, in a way, proud. So uh, my apologies for nudity. The women who are nakedly dancing around a fire pit. This looks a bit like Stonehenge. Obviously it's not Stonehenge, but is this what they did at Stonehenge? This is fertility and the mother goddess. Now, in witchcraft, there is the triple goddess. I think that this stuff is steeped in ancient paganism, and we can uh, comfortably surmise that they are worshiping the earth, fertility, sacrifice, sexual, uh, generative mother energy. Okay, now I'm not maligning women, but we can see that this is about, the, the maypole is about sexu sexuality. They feature that in this movie. The uh, naked women dancing around the fire by these, uh, you know, monolithic ancient Stones, there's there's something that is quite pagan about it. I, I don't think anyone would disagree with me. This is not a typical Sunday at my house, right? <laughs> this is not what I do with my friends. So, okay. <clears throat> Just looking through. Okay, here we have the mock child sacrifice. The girl is wearing the crown of flowers. And this smock 
Of course, in this movie, the protagonist, who is the police officer sent to um, rescue the little girl, the whole thing is a game. And they're, they're not going to sacrifice this child. They're going to sacrifice the male virgin. Okay. So I don't know what images are going to come up. Oh, look at this one. This is the full view of... <laughs> Sorry. Christopher Lee in drag. Okay, he has a wand. And I believe that's Holly in his hand. Now look what we have here in the back. Stag horns. Everywhere. Stag horns. Okay. This ancient rite features stags and woodland creatures. And just so happens to be led by someone who is looking quite androgynous. Coincidence? Methinks not. <laughs> Here we have Lee with the Sith. That's the harvest instrument. Here he is in drag. And you can see in the background again, here are the horned creatures. So is Kronunos the god of the hunt, as they say he is? And whom are they hunting? Is this human hunting? We know that the elite have at least been accused of having hunting parties for humans, for sport. And recently there's been a movie that, uh, they, they produced a movie, I don't know the name of it, but the whole premise is that people get dropped off at this chateau or large mansion, and they're hunted by the elite. And I'll perhaps look up that movie, but it's called something like The Hunt. So I think it's truth in plain sight. I don't believe that these things are a coincidence. They're worshiping Lucifer and Cronunos and the Baphomet and the left-hand path and all things opposite of God through paganism. And as Christopher Lee said, it doesn't matter which way they are worshiping, through which entity or which practice. The fact is they are worshiping the dark forces and the prince of darkness. All right. Thank you for listening.